Okay, let's talk Apple Silicon. Having used the M1 Mac Mini for quite some time now, I wanted to share my opinions about it from a neutral standing. I do have a soft spot for the Apple universe, but let's face it, most of Apple's first generation devices have been pretty rough. So to see if that's still the case, I use this Mac Mini as my only computer for close to three weeks now. It is configured with a 16 gigabyte RAM and 256 gigs of storage. I will be posting specific tests and comparisons on this channel. So hit the bell icon after hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already done that. There's two reasons I chose to go with the M1 Mac Mini. One is that my 2017 MacBook Air started showing signs of aging and two being the possibilities of this 5 nanometer M1 SoC. So far Rosetta 2 is doing its job pretty well and I've had only a couple of apps that are totally dysfunctional. I did expect a lot more apps to act abnormal, but yeah, I was wrong. This problem doesn't look like it'll be around for long either as multiple developers are already pushing out optimized software or even the public betas for native Apple Silicon support. And that's exactly where the good stuff lies in the optimized apps. These optimized apps just blew my mind. They're not only just faster and more fluidic, but they increase the versatility of this device by a huge amount. I was skeptical about the performance of this thing given its size and weight, and also the way that Apple unveiled it. But now that I've used it for quite some time, I feel that the numbers really wouldn't have mattered. What really matters though is on the back, the ports. This one has a shotgun jack for AC power input. Right next to that is an ethernet port that delivers speeds of only up to a single gigabit per second. Given the fact that computers in this price range are packing in an ethernet port of 10 gigabits per second capabilities, this one's a bad apple. Then comes the HDMI 2.0 out port that supports resolutions of up to 4K and also can drive your living room TV. And to its right is a pair of USB 3.2 generation one ports which is still disappointing to see as they offer speeds of up to only five gigabits per second as opposed to the generation two ports that can do 10 gigabits per second. Just below those USB type A ports is an uninvited guest who at this point, I think we really should be grateful for, the headphone jack. Not a common occurrence these days, but it is very nice to see Apple still having it around. Oh, and there's also the power button right next to the power jack. The showcase feature on the back is the pair of Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports. Both of them have their own Thunderbolt controllers, which is why they can be expanded to have two additional ports each through a dedicated hub. But due to M1's limited I.O. pins, these ports can only drive a single display of a resolution of up to 6K. Up front, there's the power LED which just stays on if it is powered on or even in sleep mode. It also has a below average sounding speaker, but weirdly no microphone. And that's basically it for the hardware part of it. On the software side of it, the Mac mini comes preloaded with Mac OS 11.0 Big Sur. And this has only been swift, snappy and smooth throughout my usage. Now from a neutral point of view, all operating systems have their own ups and downs. And Big Sur is no exception to that. There have been issues popping up in plenty a few of which Apple has already acknowledged. And personally, I've been facing Bluetooth connectivity issues, which apparently aren't that rare. It's weird to see that Apple's own Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse just keep erratically disconnecting all the time. And these are the input devices that Apple recommends you use with these computers. The only fix for this until Apple patches it up is to go back a full 20 years into a completely wired rig, which only cluttered my desk even more. But apart from this issue, it's been smooth sailing for me most of the time. It comes pre-installed with the standard Apple apps that include iMovie, GarageBand, and the whole iWork suite. Even with all of that, you get close to about 205 gigs of space with about 50 gigabytes being used up by the OS and pre-installed apps. Now let me get to the real question. Is it really worth switching to Apple Silicon right now? And the answer to that, at least at the time of recording, isn't straightforward. That's because there's two sides to it. While most of the apps that you'll end up using daily are optimized or will be optimized in the very near future, there are a few that might never work with Apple Silicon. This is again very specific to how you use your own computer 
and what apps you use. So there is some research that will be involved before you go out to buy one of these M1 Max. I personally chose this one as it fits my need perfectly for a computer that I can edit these videos on and also some of my audio and also do it very efficiently. In my experience with it till now, it surely has enhanced my editing workflow and also sped up the whole process. Otherwise, if you urgently need a new Mac, the M1 lineup is completely worth it. And I said urgently because there are rumors floating around of an updated Apple SoC and also new MacBook Pros coming out very soon. So that's something to keep in mind before you go out and buy a new M1 Mac Mini. A quick pro tip. The most optimal M1 Mac Mini configuration, budget permitting, is the one with 16 gigs of RAM and the 256 gigabyte SSD. That's all owing to the inability of a future RAM upgrade on this device and also the ability to expand storage externally. And you can do this at a lower cost per gigabyte than what Apple charges you. This is exactly what my setup has been for the past three weeks. I've just hooked up a one terabyte Samsung T5 SSD to the Thunderbolt 4 port, review link in the top right corner. And this gives me the full speed of the T5. I've also made a full review of the T7 SSD, which is much faster than the T5, which you can find linked in the description below. And you really can use any SSD or hard disk for this expansion and still save a ton of cash. So yeah, that has been my review of the M1 Mac Mini. I really hope you found this video useful and if you did, you know exactly what to do. Go ahead and smash like and also hit the subscribe button so that we can reach our goal of 250 subscribers by the end of February. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you around very soon. Bye bye.